Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on natural logarithms integration part two, including the beloved trig functions. And here are the two exercises for today. Let's get on into that first one. So, indefinite integral of cotangent pi x dx. And as we go over our mental checklist of trig derivatives, none of them equal cotangent exactly. Now, if we had a negative cosecant pi x times cotangent pi x, then we could be in business. We know that the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. But that's not what we got here. So coming up short, just going over our list of trig derivatives, let's think of our trig identities from pre-calc. We know that cotangent can be written as cosine over sine. So let's write that. Cosine pi x over sine pi x. And now we're getting somewhere because this fits one of those patterns that we've been uh, getting accustomed to lately. This, this basically fits our u prime over u pattern. If we define this bottom as being u equals sine of pi x, then u prime would equal the derivative of sine, which would be cosine, pi x. Now do the chain rule. We need to multiply that times pi. And that just happens to be a multiple of what we have up top. So let's go ahead and turn that numerator into our u prime. Let's go ahead and make that pi times cosine of pi x. And to balance it out, we'll put a 1 over pi on the outside of the integral. And we've now got our u prime over u pattern. So we anti-derive. We know this is going to give us ln of the absolute value of u, which in this case, sine pi x. Uh, that 1 over pi comes along for the ride. And we do a plus c. All right, so let's see if we can uh, check this with the calculator. I feel like we've been, or I've been wimping out a lot in recent videos saying that, no, nah, it's too hard to check. So here's going to be the strategy. Uh, I'm going to enter our solution, our antiderivative, in as y1. And then when I uh, derive at some random point of my choosing, I should expect to get a value that is consistent with cotangent of pi x. And I will have entered that in as y2. Okay, so y1, y2. All right, and as far as the plus c in my y1, um, I, I just didn't enter anything at all. Again, we could have entered any constant in for c, but I just left it blank. Um, I de decided ahead of time that these would be some decent window settings to use. And when I go ahead and hit graph, uh, this is what we got. Now remember our solution, uh, y1, is in bold here. And it looks like that this graph just goes up and down and up and down. We, we know better. We know there's probably some asymptotes there at, at all the integers, at x equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, etc. So I'm not going to try to find a derivative at, at any of the integers. Um, so let's just go to second calc. Let's go to dy over dx. I'm going to enter number 6 on the calculator. And I'm going to just pick some random decimal. Let's say 0.7. So I'll enter 0.7 there. And we see that the derivative is negative 0.7265. Let's keep that in mind, negative 0.7265. So I'll jump down, use the arrow button to jump down to my derivative function. And I see that, indeed, I have an output of negative 0.7265. So I'd say that's a pretty compelling check. All right, let's go on to our second exercise. In the last exercise, we integrated cotangent. This time, looks like we're going to integrate tangent. And we'll just take a similar approach as we did in the last exercise. Secant, that's going to take a slightly different approach. So let's go ahead and just uh, um, separate these into two separate integrals. dx plus integral of secant 4x dx. And I'll go a little more quickly for the tangent, again, since it's so similar to, the, uh, to what we did in the last exercise. Sine 4x over cosine 4, uh, 4x dx. 
we know that if we define the bottom to be u, then u prime will equal negative sine 4x, and due to the chain rule, times 4. So seeing how similar that is to the numerator here, we'll multiply the numerator times negative 4, and we'll put a negative 1 fourth on the outside to balance it out. And now we've got our u prime over u pattern. And when we integrate, we'll get ln, absolute value of u, which in this case is cosine 4x, with the negative 1 fourth out in front. I won't do a plus c quite yet because I've still got this other integral to deal with. Ah, if only the second integral would be quite that straightforward. If we were to try a similar strategy with that second integral, uh, secant of 4x, well, that could be written as 1 over cosine 4x. But that does not fit the u prime over u mold. As we saw over here on the left, we really need there to be a sine of 4x up here uh, in the numerator in order for, for the u prime over u pattern to work. So scratch that idea. Uh, of course, we go over our mental list of trig derivatives, and there is no derivative that equals just secant or secant of 4x in this case. So this is where somebody very clever a long time ago, I honestly don't know who came up with this, but I would sure love to be their friend. They came up with this little piece of divine inspiration here. And one has to wonder what the thought process was that led uh, somebody to this discovery. But we'll reap the benefits here. We have to uh, think, what could we put here and here um, that would be beneficial to us? Well, if we're thinking in terms of trig functions and we, and we realize that we need the u prime over u pattern, so we think of which trig derivatives are going to have a secant uh, in them, well, we might think, okay, the derivative of secant has a secant in it. So if we put a secant of 4x down here, well, its derivative would be secant times tangent of 4x. And we can't put a tangent of 4x up here because whatever we put in the denominator has to be duplicated in the numerator. So let's try tangent of 4x. That, that derivative, the derivative of tangent, also has secant in it. So the derivative of tangent of 4x would involve secant times another secant. But same problem. Whatever we put up top um, needs to be duplicated down below. So let's combine those two ideas. This is such a big, wondrous idea, I had to clear up a little space there. Let's put secant 4x plus tangent 4x. And let's go ahead and duplicate it up top. Secant 4x plus tangent 4x. And when I define my bottom, the denominator as being u, then u prime would equal secant 4x, tangent 4x, and due to the chain rule, times 4, which I'll, I'll put in front. And then the derivative of tangent would give us secant squared of 4x. And once again, due to the chain rule, I need a 4, which once again I'll put in front. And we look up and discover that that is essentially our numerator, or at least a constant multiple of our numerator. We see secant 4x tangent 4x, secant 4x times tangent 4x. We see secant squared 4x, well we see secant times another secant. There's our secant squared. The only thing we're missing are those 4's. So let's go ahead and put a 4 up here in the numerator. Let's put a 1 fourth out front to balance it out. And we've got our u prime now up top. So I know this is getting a little messy, but hang with me here. We're, we're nearing the end here. We see that this fits the u prime over u pattern, so we'll do plus ln of the absolute value of u, which in this case is secant 4x plus 
tangent 4x, uh, the 1 fourth out front, and then a plus c. Now, if you want to put a box around it at this time, I'm not opposed to it. However, we know that with trig, Sometimes to our frustration, there are multiple ways of writing the same answer. So again, if you get this, uh, I'm not opposed to it, but if you're checking the back of the book or if it's a multiple choice test, you may not see this. So let's, let's explore what else we might expect uh, or how else we might write this answer. Uh, let's start by writing this in the opposite order. So let's say one fourth of that ln minus one fourth of this ln and then plus the C. And let's also factor out this one-fourth. There, just like that. Let's consider our log properties now. Notice that we've got an ln minus another ln. So let's recall that that means we could write that as a single ln of this over this. That's our, that's our logarithmic quotient property. So let's make that one-fourth ln with some big absolute value bars of this over this. So this is a way you might see the answer written as a, a single logarithm. Now there's one more possibility that I'll throw at you and then I promise I'll stop. Let's consider that a cosine of 4x being divided on the bottom is the same as a secant 4x, its reciprocal, being multiplied up top. So in that case, we could write 1 fourth ln, again, some big absolute value bars. So let's bring this down. And again, this cosine 4x will take the form of secant 4x being multiplied by all of this. So again, consider that any of these with boxes around them can be considered valid answers.